Well, good evening, everybody. And uh, on behalf of Warwickshire County Cricket Club, we hope you're keeping safe and well uh, in these continuing strange times. Welcome to our latest live web chat in association with Scrivens. In the coming weeks and months, we'll be holding plenty of these with many illustrious Bears players, past and present. But first of all, over the next three weeks, we'll be speaking to the three Bears legends who retired at the end of this season just finished. Next Monday, our guest will be Tim Ambrose. Two weeks from tonight, we will be speaking live to Ian Bell. But tonight, we welcome Jeetan Patel, winner of every domestic trophy available to the Bears during his more than decade with the club, and a man who, it's fair to say, stands shoulder to shoulder with Alan Donald as the greatest and most popular overseas bear. You told me to say that, didn't you say, Jeet? No, I'm certainly not shoulder to shoulder. Maybe shoulder to armpit. Well, well, welcome, welcome, Jason. Thanks very much for joining us. No, it's nice to be here. An emotional time? Yeah, it has been. Um, you know, obviously going into that last round robin game, not knowing um, when anything would finish, it's it's quite a weird weird way to go into a game. And you know, we the result didn't go away, but look, it's it's just been an emotional few weeks, I think. Um, during these COVID times when, you know, the grounds are empty and we're trying as hard as we can to win games without the support that we usually get. Um, but also along the way, trying to help upskill those that are coming through because that's, that's also part of my role. It's, you know, it's, it's been emotional to think that um, I'll never get an opportunity to go out into Edge Baston and play again um, or play cricket full stop, to be honest with you. But well, I'm glad I came over. I'm glad I was given the opportunity by the club to come over um, and to, to get some closure. Well, we've got uh, the thanks very much for joining us, Chiefs. We've got the usual great range of questions from members. Many thanks to everyone who uh, has sent a question in. Before we get cracking, I should just mention that this is Jeet and Patel week all across the Bears channels this week. A Jeet's pod blast is available and downloadable from iTunes. BBC Sounds and Spotify. There'll be a, a special three-part in-depth interview with Jeets on the Bears website uh, installments tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday. And uh, there is a Jeets quiz at the moment on the Bears app with the prize of a shirt signed by the man himself. So loads of good stuff around. But first, the questions tonight. Jeets, they come in no particular order, so you could get anything at any time. And uh, we'll start off with a, quite a tough one, I think. Uh, Aaron Viles, thank you, Aaron, for your question. Here's one to make you think, Jeets. What has been the defining moment for you during your time with the Bears? Uh, I think 2014 was pretty defining. Um, when we just had our firstborn and we just arrived into the UK. Um, and New Zealand cricket decided to email me to say, look, we'd like you to go to the West Indies. And I wasn't really in much um, mental space to be able to do that. Um, only because we just had a four week old baby and traveled halfway across the world. And obviously there's no manual when it comes to kids. We didn't really know what we were doing. Um, and then having to do it on our own. So I didn't feel like it was appropriate to go to the West Indies and tour. Um, and then, and what happened was the, the club offered me an extra year on my contract. Um, at the same, well, two day, well, a day later, and that pretty much made my decision that, um, look, you know, I, I could go to the West Indies, I could play, and, and it wouldn't guarantee me anything more than that, um, bar, you know, some international cricket and another opportunity to represent my country, which I do hold highly. Um, but what Warwickshire gave me was a career um, at that point. They gave me an opportunity to come back for, or well, to have two seasons in a row with them. And with that, um, you know, that was probably the biggest defining moment. And, and it meant, well, we ended up having a very good year then. Um, and I got to be a dad for six months before, um, before shooting back. Yeah, we'll, we'll come a little bit later on to some of the sacrifices that you have to make as a, as a top level uh, cricketer all year round. But um, another question from Aaron, actually, uh, what will you miss most about Edge Baston? Uh, do you know what? I'll miss the people. Um, and I know that sounds like a really easy thing to say, but yeah, I've been fortunate enough to play in a lot of lot of amazing stadiums um, and to see Edge Baston grow to what it is now from back in 2009 when it certainly didn't look like this as it does now. Um, 
or play like this as well in terms of the pitch. Um, but the people, it's right, it's right from when I, when I arrive at the ground from the security people, JT and his team that, you know, look after us on the car park through to clear at the front gate uh, at reception through to obviously one of the greatest, the greatest members of, of Warwickshire County Career Club and that's Keith Cook. Um, I'm very lucky to have had a very steady uh, coaching staff all throughout that and and the people obviously through the office as well but you know the players that I've had to play with um, and I've loved every single one of them uh, that, that's probably that's probably the one thing I'll miss the most is the people. A question from Alan Plum. Uh, Jeets, uh, thank you Alan for your question. Uh, he says thanks for everything Jeets, you retire as one of the best ever spin bowlers uh, in the county championship and as a Warwickshire legend. Uh, while you also had a significant international career, and are there circumstances in which you think you could have achieved more in the international arena? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, <clears throat> they, they probably were, but I probably wasn't ready. Um, when I first started, it's all I wanted to do was play international cricket. Um, when, I, when I first turned professional at 19, um, all I wanted to do was play for New Zealand, but I quickly realised once I got there that I probably wasn't up to it mentally. Um, and and that's, that's took a toll on me as a cricketer, as a person, um, as a spin bowler. And, you know, coming back to, to play domestic cricket and having success and give me an opportunity to learn more about myself, I think that's when I was probably at my best. And, you know, it was no surprise that... Um, uh, I got those selections later on in my career around 2017 and, and I actually really, really enjoyed my time with the Silver Fern on um, playing India and South Africa and uh, Bangladesh and, you know, being involved in the Champions Trophy um, that was held here. It was it was pretty cool. They were some good times and I also trusted my ability. I knew what I was doing and when I was going to do it as opposed to the young guy who, you know, didn't really grasp it, didn't really understand it, um, was probably afraid of the game. Uh, whereas now, you know, I have a lot of love for the game. And I think it probably put me in a better stead to play at the back end of my career than it did in my start. Question from Bob Holness. Thank you very much, Bob, for getting in touch. Uh, his question, uh, which player, uh, Jeets, did you enjoy getting out the most? And who was the most difficult batsman to bowl at? Uh, it's oh, a lot this you look at them all now and I'm I'm not trying to be polite but they're all pretty good um, the bats have got bigger the wickets got flatter but look I, who's the guy I got to enjoy getting I think anyone that would play in smash cricket um, you know they're always big scalps whether it's domestically or, or on the international level um, you know bowling to Bowling to Triscothic was difficult, but very rewarding. Um, Alistair Cook, Sir Alistair Cook, sorry. Um, to be honest, it, like I said, a lot of those top order batters who went on to play for England um, or internationally. But uh, but I did I did going back to that one name. You know, I did enjoy getting uh, Marcus Triscothic because he was such a game changer for them. Um, he was like their linchpin, and they followed him. So for me, it was it was my turn to match up and, and get him out so that we could get get on with the game and, and hopefully get a march on Somerset when, when he was playing. Carl Jordan sent in some questions. Thanks, as always, uh, Carl. He says, uh, Jeets, first of all, many thanks for your service to Warwickshire over the years. What was your most memorable game for the Bears in both County Championship and Limited Overs cricket? Oh, you know, we played a game last year at... at uh, there's two games last year that we played and we won them both. And obviously it's not all about winning, but I think you'd, you'd probably be, you'd get it if you watch me play about the passion I have about winning games cricket. Um, you know, when we beat York, uh, when we beat Yorkshire at York, uh, we, when we beat Knotts at Knotts, when, you know, they put on 500 in the first innings and, and we still managed to get over the line chasing 380. Um, but, you know, there's, there's been some fantastic games that, um, that we've been a part of elsewhere that haven't resulted in wins, you know, going to Hampshire last year and, and drawing that match where we had no right to win with no bowling attack. Well, I say no bowling attack, a very decimated bowling attack, um, a very tired team, uh, a very tired me. Um, uh, you know, the, the T20 finals day 2014 when we win that final was pretty epic. 
um, obviously because it's a final, but uh, to go up against a Lanx side who who drafted in probably one of the best all-rounders of all time and Andrew Flintoff, um, you know, that was a pretty special day to win that. Um, we beat Somerset in a semi-final at our place in the 50-over comp. Um, I got five from that, so that obviously sticks out to me. But uh, look, I've, I've had so many good times, and, and I don't think it's just one game. I think it's, you know, every every day is a different challenge, and it, it, within that day, there's always one hour that I feel it's very rewarding. Uh, Carl also uh, asks um, an interesting question, Jeets. Throughout your career with the Bears, uh, you really didn't have an injury that kept you out for any length of time. Uh, what preparation did you do to prevent being injured uh, or was it good fortune? I should add, I think probably most people know that you bowled through quite a few injuries over the years, didn't you? Yeah, I was going to say that, you know, it's, that's not quite true. There's always, there's always something going wrong. Um, you know, my, my right knee's always bugging me since I was 19. Um, I had a very sore forearm last year. I think you might have seen through the tape that was passed all over me. Um, Oh, there's always been something that's gone on, but I think my resilience has probably come from, uh, first of all, desire to be on the park, a real desire to not miss games, um, to not not contribute. Um, to you know, I've I've bowled a lot of overs, and and helping helping with that has been able to go home to New Zealand and keep playing. I think that was probably the best thing for me. If if I didn't keep playing, I think the injuries would have plagued me more. And I know that sounds silly, but it meant that I didn't train as much. I just got to play more games and, and look after my body so that I was always ready to play. A question from Eli Z. Farn. Um, Jeets takes you right back to the start, your debut. Um, he said, Eli says, thank you, Jeetan, for everything you've done for the Bears. Um, it all started quite strangely, though, with uh, match figures of one for 190 and a maiden century on, on your debut against Yorkshire. What can you recall about that game? Uh, well, I didn't bowl very well. Um, no, we were up against it, and um, I think we were 180 for eight or something. Um, Trotty was on 80 odd, and and I went in, and you know we ended up getting a good partnership, um, a very good partnership. And you know I was fortunate enough to go and get 100. I think I got dropped a couple of times, but you know you never talk about that. Um, and I, I just for me it felt like I needed to contribute in some way. I wasn't taking wickets. Um, you know, and I probably didn't enjoy the Duke's ball at the time then, but um, but since since then it's sort of pushed me up the order, which I haven't really liked. I would have preferred to be back, back down where I belong, um, but it's meant that I've had to play an all-rounders role for some of those years of, of cricket. Um, and, and again, I always talk about contributions, and I think there's always one to be had, and that's whether it's in the bat ball of, uh, or in the field, so... It was nice to contribute that day, and it was also nice that um, you know I got to get Trotty over and over the line for his hundred. Because if I didn't do that, I think I would have copped a copped a hiding in the changing room that day as well. Charles Ross, thank you uh, for your question, Charles, and thank you for your kind comments uh, as well. Very best wishes for, to you, um, Charles. Says hi, Jeets. Thanks heaps for everything. It's been a privilege watching you bowl, uh, especially your intensity. Um, Charles says, many years ago, I was lucky enough to spend a year living, working and playing in New Zealand. I loved it. Uh, and he says, what is the one thing uh, about the Kiwi approach to sport uh, which, from which you think English cricketers could learn? Yeah, it's, I've spoken about this before to probably guys around our changing room, um, not so much the players, but more around the management about um, how we can upskill these guys. Um, and the one thing in New Zealand is, I suppose, it's still very semi-professional. It's not quite fully professional yet. And I think what the guys feel like they have to do over there is pour everything into their games. Um, you know, because the contracts run on six-month basis and by the end of the season, you may be, you know, the end of the six months, you're probably out of contract or you are out of contract till the next summer rolls around. Um, there's a lot of importance on wanting to succeed every day. Um, wanting to find a way to contribute to, to a win. Uh, I'm not saying that doesn't happen here, but I just feel with the extended contracts, three, four years, um, that people can sign on. You can actually sort of host your way for a year or so. And it, um, that, that's just an outsider looking in. It's not, it's not a dig at the system. In fact, I, I do like the system because it, it does treat 
for me, cricket like a job, um, and it has been a job for, for the last 10 years. It's just one that I've, I've been lucky enough to, to love. Um, you touch on uh, county cricket there. That leads on, Jeeps, to a question from Frank Craven. Thank you very much, Frank, for getting in touch again. Uh, and uh, he says, Jeeps, county cricket uh, has always had a few critics, but it still seems to attract top players. Uh, um, what do you think of county cricket as a preparation for test match cricketers? And uh, do you think uh, space should be found for all the formats, Championship, T20 and 50 over, even with the 100 coming in next year? Or is it just going to be too busy for the players? Look, the one thing about uh, cricket in England is it is, good, it is busy. And I think that's why it does attract a lot of people, um, a lot of good players. I think they want to be busy. They want to they want to be playing um, uh, around, around the rest of the world. They probably don't play as much cricket, so therefore they feel like they're training a lot. Um, but over here, you you play and you play and you play. And when you get an opportunity to break and have a, have a rest, you, you do that. You rest. Um, yes, of, of course, there are training days, but they're probably more top-up days in, in the season as opposed to real hone your skill days. I think the one thing with county cricket is uh, it really ex exploits your flaws. Um, once if you get on a bad run, then everyone knows about it very quickly. Um, so you need to find ways to become very strong-minded and, and have a lot of will to get your game back in order to be able to succeed. Um, and that's... I mean, will there be enough space for everything next year? I, I really don't know. Um, you know, I was going to—I was interested to see how it would play out this year, but I think um, what it will do is give an opportunity for the next tier of players um, to be exposed, and who knows what, who's going to come from there. It might be some younger people that um, that really showcase their skills and have get an opportunity to earn full-time contracts playing playing other formats. We've mentioned your intensity, and of course, you you have played all formats um, for the Bears. It's a lot of cricket, especially when you, of course, you play in New Zealand in the winter as well. Has there ever been a time when you've thought, "Oh no, it's another game"? Or do, are you up for every single game? <laughs> oh look, there's uh, there's got to be times where you've um, where I'm tired, uh, where I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't say bored, but you know, I could be thinking of other things to do. Um, but as soon as I cross the line, it's there's I've got no option. Um, it's it's like a, you know, that white line fever that people people, people talk about. It's like a uh, switch that flicks, and I'm like, right, what do, what do I need to do now? We're in, we're at work. Um, I've got to provide. I've got to contribute. Um, and and I think the passion and intensity comes from that switch. It comes from well, if I'm here, then let's do it properly. Um, let's do it as best as I can, and and hopefully. Hopefully, because it's not always the case, um, we have we have a result that favours us. Thank you, Jess. Uh, Jess Ellicott has sent a couple of questions. Thanks ever so much, Jess. Um, and uh, she says, as a family, Jess, we want to say a huge thank you and congratulations on a fantastic career. Uh, one question is, when you think of Edge Baston, what comes into your head? Uh, when I think of Edge Baston, what comes into my head... It shouldn't take me this long to think of it, should it, really? Um, I, do you know, I just think it's the, the enormity of it. Um, and I know that sounds funny because once you're in the middle, it seems quite small. But, you know, you drive into the ground, and everything seems very big and very proud. And, um, you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of people that want that expect that have this desire for you to succeed and, and that's the one thing I probably love about the place um, I said before it is about the people that work there but but genuinely it's just the, the enormous support that we get from everyone um, that'll be the one thing that I said I'd miss but also that that's probably the one thing that I love the most about going to work and Jess also asks um, yeah. you may have covered this slightly but do you have any particular moments that will stay with you uh, and thank you again, says Jess. Yeah, I, I've, I said before there are a few moments in terms of games and, and wickets taken, but, you know, there's so many other smaller things. Um, you know, when I got capped, that was quite emotional for me because I got capped in 2011, um, and that was very short time into my career, um, or 12 it might have been. Um, you know, once my... There's a little plaque that sits on my locker, which has my number on it, 489. Um, 
and the date I got capped on. And, and that's, that's pretty special. And, you know, they're, they're things that no one needs to know. I'll only, I'll know those and we'll know, you guys will know them as well. But um, yeah, so they're, they're special times. It's, it's all the times I have with my friends um, and I'll miss them. I'll miss them a lot. One moment, actually, that Ollie Hannon Dolby shared with us on uh, one of these a few weeks ago was the time down you were bowling at Horsham Jeets and the ball looped to Sam Hayne at short leg and the sun got in his eyes and he just let it fall gently to ground and then put his cap on at the end of the over. Is that a moment that you recall fondly? Yeah, it wasn't, as, it wasn't that he put his cap on, Brian. It was the fact that he put his sunglasses back on. Um, <laughs> You know, and sunglasses are used for that obvious reason, to keep the glare out of your eyes. Um, yeah, that, that was a frustrating moment because we were up against it. Um, and, you know, I think everyone can understand my sentiment, well, not, maybe not understand it, but get my sentiments when, when I get a little bit disappointed about those opportunities going miss. Question from... Lawrence G. Hawthorne, uh, Jeets, uh, he says, which members of the Bears or which member of the Bears staff did you like getting out the most? I assume talking about practice here. Uh, practicing, yeah. Look, I, I love, uh, recently we've, I've been having a lot of battles with Ed Pollock because um, obviously we're only playing, well, I'm only playing the white ball, uh, was playing the white ball. Um, so we had a lot of battles. We had a lot of, um, there were a lot of golf balls exchanged for wickets or sixes hit. Um, but look, I, yeah, I mean, it's not when I don't go to the nets to get guys out. I go to the nets to see where my game is and what I need to what I need to work on. But you know, I've always enjoyed bowling to Tim Ambrose. I think he's obviously a very very good batsman, full stop. But his ability to play spin is very good. Um, and you know, before I came to to Edge Best, and I actually got him out at test level as well. Um, and I've, I frequently remind him of that, but, uh, but look, it's, it's not about the training for me. You mentioned Tim Ambrose there, Jeets, and he comes up in the question actually from Arthur Poppy. Thank you very much, Arthur, for your question. Uh, he says, uh, Jeets, the rapport between spinner and wicketkeeper is uh, very important. And you seem to have a very good one for a long time with uh, Tim Ambrose. How much of a help is it to have a keeper who understands your work and you work with so well? Oh, it's the biggest partnership in the game, I think. Um, well, for me anyway, is to be able to understand what my keeper's seeing down at his end. Um, obviously, he gets to read the ball from once it bounces to, you know, once it hits his gloves. And he can tell he needs to, to well, he does work with me around how much more spin I need to put on the ball, how much, well, if there's an opportunity to put less on the ball, pace, um, how it's reacting out of the wicket. And then I can dictate, I can actually control those from my end. But Tim and I have been good mates since, you know, 2009 now. And, and he's seen me grow and I've seen him grow. Um, we play a lot of golf together. We enjoy company. You know, it's, we enjoy having a beer at the end of each day. And I think that's, that's one thing that, uh, like I said, a lot of things I've, I'll miss. But I'll certainly miss that opportunity to, to finish a hard day's work and have, have a beer with me old boy, Tim. Because he, um, like you, I think possibly could have played a few more tests. He played 11, didn't he? And uh, then he came back and probably kept and batted as well as he ever had. I wonder if he could have played a few more tests later on. Yeah, I, t I mean, it was surprising for me that he missed out on those in those circumstances. But look, different management come in. Um, there's, there's different guys banging down the door and, and a different way of play maybe. But yeah, it was, it was disappointing for him that he missed out. Um, and for all of us, because... You know, part of our job as, as Bears is to want to promote guys to play for England or to work with England. Um, that is the next level for us. So we should be keen on doing that. And uh, it hurt him. Um, but he doesn't really ever give on much, give, give off much. You sort of, you know, have to get five or six pints deep with him before he starts to give you as much as you need. Um, but it's some really good stuff that, you know, he can offer everyone and, and it's going to be he's going to be missed not just because of his cricketing ability but his ability to to gauge the changing room and offer what's needed Catherine Williams thank you Catherine for your questions two of them uh Jeets which I'll just put together I think what uh, what is the, or was the best thing about being a bear I think we can say is because once a bear always a bear uh, and where do you see your f coaching future uh the best thing about being a bear is to be uh, for me is 
to put on that bear and ragged staff and understand what it means. Um, and it means a lot of different things for a lot of different people. But for me, it's, it's what it means to me is it's, it's a career. Um, it's a life. It's given me, you know, a happy wife, two amazing kids, um, and a whole lot of supporters, a whole lot of fans, uh, a real understanding for cricket, um, and some success. And I think what, what we do forget is that uh, with success comes a lot of failures and it's the, I think the Warwickshire Bears has given me an opportunity to fail, but also to succeed. Uh, what, when it comes to coaching, um, look, I'd love to continue with that uh, role that I had with England for a while, which was outstanding. I really enjoyed it. And I think the guys that I worked with at the time were uh, very open to me being in the group. So that was quite nice. But, um, but look, I, I want to go down that coach route and, and possibly probably stay in a spin role to start with. Um, you know, get some experience before I start to look forward to maybe maybe running in a team environment because, uh, you know, you, to be an assistant coach, uh, you can only do that for so long. Frank Craven looks ahead as well. Uh, Frank, thank you for uh, sending in your question as always. Uh, he says, Jeets, you've been such a big part of the Bears for a decade, um, and I guess they have been a big part of your life. How strange will it be not to be flying back to England next spring? And will you keep in touch? Look, it will be very strange. Um, you know, my kids are used to having two homes, one in England, one in New Zealand. Um, they're obviously not here this time because of the restrictions around the world with, with COVID and bits and pieces. Um, but it will be strange to not fly back at the early April and, and have two days to prep for the first game and get straight back into it. But everything moves on um, and I've got to move on with that. Um, of course, I'll stay in touch. Of course, well, you know, once a beer, always a beer, and and that rings true to me. And part of me making the beer proud is is making sure that I stay in touch with with Warwickshire and the game itself. Question from May Simkin. Good evening, May. Uh, and uh, she says, "Be uh, geez, you've had a long career with the Bears, uh, but uh, can you pick out a favourite season? You've you've already mentioned 2014. I guess 2012 was pretty special too." Yeah, 12. 12 was extremely special, you know, winning the championship. I also had got got back in the New Zealand team um, and had a little stint quickly back in India with them. So that was a good year. 2014 was amazing. Um, like I said, the, the club gave me security around my career. Uh, we went on to win a title and, you know, Lord's final, but, you know, and only narrowly missed out on the championship. Um, and it's funny enough, I think that my best years have revolved around when we when we had kids. Um, so Nia was born, my daughter was born in 2014. And then, you know, in 2016, we had another good year. Um, and, and Ari was born. And um, it's, I don't know what it is, but maybe, maybe they brought me some good luck in those years. Uh, we spoke last week, of course, for the interview that's going on the Bears website over the next three days, Jeets. And you, you said... I oh, don't mind a little uh, heads up for the feature that's coming on the website. You did say that it, it is now maybe time in a way to give a bit back to your family because they've sacrificed a lot for you. And that will be one thing you can do now, isn't it? More family time after so many months and months apart. Yeah, look, look, I mean, we've, I've been doing this playing cricket for 20 years now. And, um, you know, I think my wife needs a break <laughs> from the kids. Um, she needs to, want to be a person again and maybe have some adult contact. Um, she's been amazing. I, you know, that support and sacrifice that she's given me. Um, you know, kids have always been uh, very positive around me going to work and, and wanting to succeed. And, you know, they love watching me on TV. And I don't think they quite understand that um, I played cricket for a living and it, um, it took a lot out of me. But um, I think that the other thing they do understand is that, you know, it's, they sacrifice a lot. Um, but they love the times when I am at home. And I think lockdown really nailed that for me when we were back in New Zealand. We had, what, you know, eight to 12 weeks of family time and we, we'd never had that before. So it was nice to, to get a taste of what's coming because I am looking forward to spending at least, you know, or however long it is with them, whether it's um, three weeks before I have to go back to work or three months because I miss them. Um, and... They've given me a lot of support. And when you're playing with them in the, the garden, Jeets, have they got this, the same Jeets intensity? 
Uh, well, my Nia does, my daughter does, but I think she doesn't, that's more through frustration than anything else. I think Ari's just there to have a laugh. Um, but he is only three, so he's still trying to hold a bat first. But uh, look, my daughter has asked if she can play cricket this year, so that'll be quite exciting to, to take her to cricket. Um, and I think Ari will follow in those footsteps and, and want to do the same as well. Question from Matt Grubb. Uh, Jeet, thanks, Matt. Um, uh, he says, thanks for everything, Jeet. And, uh, and he talks about your recent uh, spell with the England camp working with the spinners. He said, what is the toughest thing that uh, a spinner has to adapt to when making up the step up to test cricket? What, what you've been really trying hardest with them to prepare them for? Oh, it's, there's a lot of things, but it's, it's probably the mental game. Um, Look, I don't know everything about spin bowling. I don't know um, everything about how people work just yet. I'd, I'd love to learn more, but it's, it is the mental game. It's, it's, I found it was giving them the ability to be trusted, um, you know, to trust themselves, to go out there and explore how good they could be by being as simple as possible. Because, you know, young minds right now, which is fair, you know, have a tendency to wander and to have everything right now. Um, but it's, it is about doing the yards and it's about being as patient as you can. And, and you know, one fizz, two fizz, three fizz, five fizz, it's, it's, it's about the contribution. And I think that's the one thing Team England have got right right now is um, they're very, very big on what people can offer in the moment. Um, they are small moments that win games of cricket. Um, and, you know, the hundreds and the, the double hundreds and those things that we've seen this summer from them already have, is just a process. It's just part of uh, a contribution. But, um, but the winning moments, they're the ones that, you know, you want to be a part of. And, and they're the things I probably try to get across a lot to, to the Leeches, to the Besses, the Parkinsons especially. I think the Rashids and the Moellies know exactly what they're doing and how to do it. Um, for them, it's just being there to be able to someone to talk to. Um. Of course, one spinner that came to the fore quite recently for the Bears is Jake Lintock. Didn't he come in and do well? Yeah, he was fantastic this year. And he's obviously spent you know, a long time trying to crack it. Um, he's done his time. He's, he's now forced his way into a first team. Um, he had some great performances for us in the twos. And, and it's no wonder that um, the club invested some time in him and, and gave him an opportunity to play. Um, but also, he's so excited for the, the, the success he had. Um, he's a great lad around the change room. He's constantly asking very good questions. So he'll go a long way. Um, I hope that he keeps getting opportunities, whether it's with us. You know, I fingers crossed hope he does with, with Warwickshire. Um, but it's, it's, it's almost a corporate world now. It's, you know, who's going to probably... He may get dragged into a 100 deal. Um, how that will affect his game, how that will affect his mind will be, will be an, an interesting one. But to think he was straight... Straight from that last game, back into coaching again on Monday. So, look, he's very grounded about how he goes about his job. Uh, Peter Hyatt, uh, Jeet, mm. asks, what would be your ideal coaching job? I mean, do you look at international cricket or would you fancy just a county or something like that? Uh, well, it depends. It's, is it right now or is it later? I think right now I need some experience. Um, I'd love to keep working with the guys at England level, but we all know that they're going through a tough time themselves. Well, cricket full stop, sports full stop. Um, life actually is quite difficult for everyone right now um, I'd love to keep going back into that England environment and doing as much as I can for the guys there but if that's not the case then you know we'll have to look at different environments but um, I think overall I'd, I'd love to be a head coach of, of a side somewhere um, preferably, preferably a professional cricket site but uh, there is there's a lot of waters run into that bridge first a question from Peter Lickis uh, about this year, which of course has been so difficult for so many people in so many ways. Um, and as, as you were, as we were saying the other day, Jeez, cricket is just a very, very small comparison to yeah. what a lot of people are dealing with. But still, in the context of your final season at the Bears, Peter says, was it especially disappointing not to play any four-day cricket? Because it, it would have been lovely for you to have a, a proper farewell season. Oh, look, look, I mean, you know, Life is life and it throws different challenges at us. And, and this is a really challenging year, not, not just for me as a cricketer, but, um, but for everyone. And, and as you said, Brian, but it was difficult not to play Red Bull cricket this year. I, I, you know, I, I pride myself on my Red Bull cricket. I think I love 50 over cricket, which is 
seems to be phased out of the game again. But I think 50 over cricket is a great uh, sort of taste of both, you know, the 2020 game and the Red Bull game. But I think Red Bull game for four days of hard graft, there's nothing better. There was nothing better than hard graft for four days. Um, and at the end of it, there may not be the result that you want, which is sometimes disappointing, but it is real. Um, you know, I'm so close to 900 first-class wickets, it would have been nice to click that over. But uh, look, that opportunity didn't come. Um, and, you know, we the club gave an opportunity to, to Alex Thompson, who proved in some ways that, you know, he's he's got some skills to offer, but there's also some way to go with him. Uh, you say you're close to 900 first-class wickets. Retirements can be reversed, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't feel like I'm coming out of retirement just yet, Brian. Uh, Peter Titmus, uh, thank you very much, Peter, for all your questions over the last few weeks and months. Keep them coming. Uh, he says, Jeets, what did you like most about uh, your time here with the Bears and also about living in the area? And Richard Birkin also uh, asks similarly, what will you miss most about Birmingham? Yeah, interesting. Uh, look, I'll probably miss some of the golf courses. I really enjoy playing golf around the middle there's so many on offer. Uh, quite surprising to be able to rock up and not have to put on a set nav to go anywhere. Um, it's it's been good to to get to know another part of the world. Um, I, I will I miss the Brummy accent. I, I'm not sure. They, that'll come and go with me. But um, but look, it's you know 12 years, 11 years of just um, towing and froing. The weather being up and down and hot and cold. But look, it's it's a cool place to be. The Midlands is a great place to be for the fact you're obviously right in the middle of the country, but, you know, it's, there is so much space left and right of you that, uh, you know, you're not far away from anything. Uh, Richard Jarose asked the question, which I think you've, you've touched on. Uh, you mentioned Marcus Triscothic. Richard asks, who uh, were the best batsmen you bowled to? Um, in Test match cricket, uh, Jeets, anyone from... Around the world that you thought yeah. Brian is a bit difficult. <laughs> Rahul Dravid was, you know, outstanding, um, especially in their conditions playing against any of those Indian guys. Um, Mahela J. Wardner, Ricky Ponting. Yeah, they're, they're, they're all very, very good. Very, very good. Shiv Chandapur was tough to bowl to. Um, look, anyone at international level, I think, is, is not easy. Um, and, but I enjoyed that challenge, especially at the back end. Spirit Coley, you know, all those, I mean, Hashi Mamla, they'll, they'll keep coming, um, you know, and and even if you look at them all now, they're just as good as each other. It's it's very difficult to put, um, put a marker between any of them, really. Monica Meadows uh, asks, what are your favourite grounds that you've played at, uh, both in England and across the world? Sorry, I'll start with England. Um, Edge Baston, obviously. Uh, Lords is fantastic. Um, I really enjoyed going back to York and playing at York. York CC. Um, Arundel was lovely. Tunbridge Wells was a very good trip. We really enjoyed that. Even, you know, we lost, but we still enjoyed that trip. Um, I quite like going to Durham. I quite like it up there. I know it's a wee way away, but I really do enjoy going up there. Um, if, I'm not a big fan of Old Trafford, but that's for another conversation. Um, the Basin Reserve in New Zealand, it's, that's amazing. Um, and that's obviously another one of my home grounds. And then, then you go around the world and, you know, I haven't played at all these grounds, but I've been to a lot of them in terms of the MCG, the SCG, Adelaide Oval. Um, I think mean, when you go through South Africa and you think, uh, you know, in Cape Town, then you've got Joe Berg at the Wanderers. Is, that's pretty daunting. It's, you know, it's... They're everywhere. I was lucky enough to play on most of them. Um, and, you know, I'll look back and think I may never get back there, but um, but they were good times. They were very good times. When you mentioned the, the English grounds there, you picked out quite a few out grounds there. And, and that is one of the charms, isn't it, of county cricket, that it's not all about the big stage. You get to some quite quirky places as well. Yeah, you do. You know, I mean, obviously the opportunity to play at big stadiums and in front of crowds and um, and feel like you're a, a rock star, I suppose, some of the time is, is amazing. But uh, to be able to go to the smaller grounds and entertain 
what I think are, are better crowds for the fact that they're more in tune and with what's happening. Um, I didn't get to play at Scarborough, which was on the fixture list this year. I would have loved to have done that just to tick it off. I'm not sure. Um, you know, I hear it's quite volatile there, but it would have been quite interesting to, to try and match my intensity and passion with the, with the crowd themselves. But, you know, going to Hove and being able to walk to and from the ground and all those things that, you know, people don't really get understand. It's, they're, they're the things I miss. Another question from Carl Jordan, uh, Jeets. Uh, which gives you more satisfaction? Uh, I think I probably know the answer to this. Getting five wickets in, a game, in innings or scoring a century? Uh, well, if they're the only two options, then, then I'd say Pfeiffer. Um, I'm not too fussed about the hundreds. They, they don't, you know, it's, I'd love to say it's not my job, but it became part of my job for a little bit. Um, but more than any of that is... And I know people will might scoff at this, but it is just getting a result. Roger Small uh, asks an interesting question, Jeets. Um, he says, Tom Harrison has suggested that more must be done to broaden the diversity uh, of cricketers throughout the squads in the Championship. Uh, regularly throughout our age groups at the Bears, we are blessed with a high level of diversity. But as they get older, it starts to drop off. He says, I'd welcome your views as to why this might be and any ideas as to how it could change. You no, know, I don't really know. It's always surprised me. Um, I don't know why it is. Maybe because I haven't researched it enough. But but you go into the you go into the indoor centre at Espace and it, and it's full of diverse diversity. You know, there's loads of girls, there's loads of boys. They're all of different cultural backgrounds. It's it's fantastic and it's it's a melting pot. Um, there's some outstanding cricketers that are, that are flying around those age groups and you just hope that they get an opportunity. And maybe, maybe it is the fact that the opportunity doesn't come at the right time and therefore it's just easier to move on to something else. Maybe it's a, it's a cultural difference from home. Um, there, there could be so many things that, that, could, be this, that could be the deciding factor in the, in, in the lack of cultural diversity that we have. But I... I I think we're very lucky to be able to, you know, you go to the, the junior awards at the end of the year and it's, it's, it is such a melting pot. It's fantastic. Fantastic to see. Another question from uh, Roger. What can you tell us about your future plans, Jeet? So, of course, they're all up in the air at the moment for various reasons, aren't they? But is it possible, he said, that you'll ever be able to spend some time with our youngsters at the Bears? Oh, look, it's certainly on the radar. Um, it's certainly something I'd love to do. Uh, if there was, you know, if there was an opportunity or um, there was time, um, yeah, it's difficult to employ an overseas coach. Um, the costs involved in that are quite high. Uh, but if you think of, um, you know, where I where I'd like to be in the next six months, uh, six to eight months, then and hopefully it's back in Birmingham. Um, what for? I don't know yet, but. Um, that's that's certainly the path I'd love to get down if I could, um, and whether it means working at Edgebaston or or working with anyone in England really would be fan, would be exciting for all of us. Another question from uh, Bob Holness. Uh, thank you, Bob. He says, as a New Zealander, uh, Jeeps, which team did you most want to beat at international level, England or New Zealand, uh, England or Australia? It's always Australia. Um, you know, playing England was always good fun. Yes, there was some niggle, but uh, it's always about beating your older brother, um, and that's what they used to treat us like. They used to treat us like this little sibling. So it was always fantastic when we beat the Aussies. Um, and, and whatever sport we play, obviously the All Blacks and the Wallabies have a have a big uh, rivalry. And, and when it comes to rugby, and it has flowed on to cricket as well. So it's it's one of those things as a Kiwi kid growing up, you just get ingrained with. You know, there's that one team that you need to beat, and that's Australia. Peter Titmus um, asks a question. He asks you to put your tourist guide hat on, Jeets. He says, what are your favourite parts of New Zealand that you would recommend to a visitor? Also, were you able to get to the Rugby World Cup final in 2015 or were you back in New Zealand then? Uh, no, I was back in New Zealand for the Rugby World Cup. Um, so I didn't get that. Oh, 2015. Um, but, well, I haven't been to a Rugby World Cup final. I've been to a semi-final, but not a Rugby World Cup final. Um, I would have loved to go on to the one in Japan where we got beat, the semi, but that's so be it. I know that the English will get on top of me there. Um, 
but it, when I think about going around New Zealand, it's it's amazing. We're very lucky. Uh, it's difficult to travel, but there's so many good places to see. So many. Um, it, a lot of people say it's, it feels like an old school England. I, I sort of I don't, don't quite agree with that. Um, you know, you go up north to Tauranga and Mount Monganui, and it's it's beautiful holiday spots. Um, you go down to the depths of Queenstown, and it's it's like the adult playground of the world. It's fantastic. Um, but all in between that, there's so many lovely spots to, to stop at. And I must admit, I've been lucky enough to go to a lot of them um, just through cricket. So, again, you know, I thank the Bears, but I also thank cricket for giving me the opportunity to, to enjoy my life. Aaron Viles uh, asks uh, an interesting question, Jeets, because we all know professional sport has its ups and downs. He says, what were your toughest moments during your time at Warwickshire? Uh, yeah, there were some very tough times, and they probably weren't, I must admit, weren't at Warwickshire. Um, they were just before that, or it's right at the start, to be fair. Um, I almost quit the game in 2009 or 2010, so that took a lot of uh, a lot of mental strength to get back from where I was. So it was in a pretty dark place um, with my own game. And then and it took, you know, some special people to get around me and get me back into it, and and luckily enough, I did. You know, I'm pretty glad they did help me with that because I've loved every moment since. Um, you know, that we talk about dark times. We, we talk about, you know, does that mean lose when you lose games? Well, you know, hindsight, looking back, it's actually not that bad. Losing a game of cricket, is, is, it happens. It's cricket. You know, you're not, you're not allowed to win every game. That's just not what happens. Um, and as soon as I think if you get in that frame of mind where you – you can't feel like you're going to lose. That's when the game bites you really hard. Um, she's a beast as mother cricket. Um, and it's probably one thing that I'll hold myself high to is, you know, I've always respected her. Um, and she's in the end helped me out and give 20 years of fun. Because, of course, your, your Bears career did start off in pretty staccato fashion, didn't it, Jeets, with um, an injury? And then uh, nothing in 2009 or 10. And then you came back and actually knocked Shiv Chanderpaul out of the team. And uh, then from 2010 or 2011 onwards, you're a linchpin. Yeah. So 2009, you know, played most of the year. Didn't have the greatest of year with the years with the ball. And it really frustrated me. I was probably better with the, the T20 format then. But that also showed where my technical ability was. It was, it was more leaning towards white ball cricket. Um, and it really got me down. Um, and then 2010, missed out an opportunity to come back. Um, and then 11, I came back for the 2020, um, which I was just glad to be back for and ended up playing two Champo games ahead of Shiv, who, was, who had just arrived and he was waiting in the wings. He got sent to the twos, which is, you know, something that I, I can hang my hat on, I sent Shiv Chanderpaul to the twos. Um, but beyond that, post that, I got an opportunity to India were touring, I think, and I got an opportunity to to drive around England and, and bowl to the be a net bowler for England. Um, you know the things, you, the depths you go to to get the overs you need. Um, and I, I drove around for about three or four weeks because my had still had time on my visa, so I thought, well, there's no point in me going home when I have this fantastic opportunity. And, and that's probably what learnt me that what I where I learnt the most about the Duke's ball and how to bowl. Uh, in England and then you know since then 12 since it's been non-stop of course um actually Giles was um a very key member of the, the team of the squad and uh, the coaching staff for much of your time I guess as a spinner that was quite helpful yeah yeah it was but he just let me go about my job um I would go to him for information he would never he wouldn't really come to me and give me um any any diamonds, I suppose, it would be on me to go to get it from him. And I think that's just the way he is. Um, yes, he's always available to help, but, you know, you've got to be man enough and willing enough to go see, to go talk to him. You know, this he can be quite daunting for, for the big stature that he is, but deep down, he's only there to help. Um, and he's very supportive of everyone at this club and, and he's been very helpful to me. And I've already said thanks to him, but so I'll say thanks to him again for, for giving me an opportunity to have a career here. Of course, Ash went straight from uh, almost straight from coach to, uh, to from the playing staff to coach. And during your time, you, you've seen people like Jim Troughton and Ian Westwood go from your colleagues in the team to coach. And that's the transition that you're going to have to make now. How, how difficult is that going to be from being one of the lads to 
a coach. Very difficult. Very, very difficult. And I see, I see the difficulties they run through every day. I mean, obviously, I've played with them since, you know, since 2009. And I see uh, the tough times they go through. They're my good friends. Um, and then they move into a role that's, that's different. But also to be able to talk to players from a coaching perspective once you've played with them. Uh, I'm probably fortunate enough to be able to go away for a little bit and then come back. Um, so I, well, hopefully come back. I'm not saying I will, but hopefully come back. Um, and then that, that little natural barrier, I think, is a good thing. Um, they, we need to be able to separate from what it's like to be on the park to what it's like to be off the park. It's, I must admit, it was, you know, dealing with the England guys and watching them play international cricket, I, all I wanted to do was go out there and play with them. Um, but having no control on how they go out in the park and how they do their job, it's, it's about trying to then help them do it better next time. Interesting question from uh, Peter Titmus. Um, Jeets, uh, what career would you have done if you hadn't been a professional cricketer? Well, it is interesting. I wonder if my dad's listening here. Um, I enrolled at university in 1999 um, to do a BCA, major in accounting, uh, a Bachelor of Commerce and Administration, to major in accounting. Um, it was also the same time that the, uh, that the World Cup the Cricket World Cup was here. Um, the famous World Cup that was played with the Duke's white ball, so it swung all around the shop. Um, and I got an invite to the New Zealand Cricket Academy when my dad wasn't there. He went to England to watch the World Cup and I got this invite. You know, I was three weeks into my term at university and I had to pull out of university within that week and I didn't really have the time to say to dad, look, mate, I'm not going to go. I'm going to go play cricket instead. So I just did it off my own back and he came back to me <laughs> being in Christchurch for six months, 11 degree, 11 cricket degree. And I, I don't think he's disappointed by it, but he would have liked to me, I suppose, to have had just something a little bit along the way um, to keep ticking me over. But cricket got very busy then. It became, you know, 12 months a year quite early. So uh, I didn't really have it, the opportunity to. And, and since then, and recently, I've been, um, been back at school. So it's been quite nice. And uh, a final question uh, from the members, one from Peter. It's a controversial one, this, GC, asking you to advertise somebody. What's, what's your favourite restaurant in Birmingham during your 12 years here? Wow, my favourite restaurant in Birmingham. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, like, I do like going to a lot of them. But um, I'll say Zindia and Mosley. That's really, really cool, a little Indian joint. Um, they do street food. It's it's great. It used to be really good because it was close to the Prince of Wales, which you know I used to frequent. Um, it was my little boozer, um, me and my friends. Uh, so then we'd go to the Zindia for feed and then off home. So I definitely advertise Zindia to anyone who wants to go. Sounds very nice, uh, Jeets. And uh, actually, one question that's just coming on the group chat. Thank you, Craig. Just want to squeeze in there, um, Jeets. Craig says, um, thank you, Jeets, for all the years of service to the Bears and your honesty and emotion this evening. Um, and he just wonders, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Uh, fake it till you make it. And I know that sounds quite weird, but um, I, I was obviously spoke about the rough patch that I went through for a while, um, but everyone could see it on me. So it meant that I had to make people believe in me again. Um, and it was, it's a mentor of mine who, you know, who is in advertising. So it's sort of pretty fitting. Um, but yeah, fake it till you make it. Um, make everyone else believe that you're pretty good. And that way you might actually believe it yourself. Um, and look, sometimes in cricket, you do have to fake that you've got this, to, this amazing ability to play a pull shot when you clearly don't, or to be able to bowl a, a, a delivery that you can't bowl. Um, you know, there is there are times where you do have to fake this game. And look, it, it is a game of chess at the end of it. And you've got to make someone believe that you're better than them. Well, Jeets, that's great stuff this evening. Thanks ever so much. Um, on a personal note, it's been a pleasure dealing you, with you for this last decade. Um, and your farewell message to the members. Farewell yeah. for now. <laughs> yeah, look, I... I've been thinking about this for a little while and, you know, it's been a real shame to not be able to go out to Edgebaston and, and see you all there and support me, heckle me at times. Um, 
to be able to go up to the members bar and, and have a beer with some of you and, you know, hear your input on the day's play or where we are at the season and, you know, ultimately wish us all the best. Um, look, I've, I've loved your support. I've loved how you support not only me, but the club. Um, look, the beer and ragged stuff means a lot to me and I know it does to you, but thank you very much. And I wish I could shake all your hands, but the reality is I can't. Jeets, it's been an honour. Thank you to all the Warwickshire members for your company tonight. And many thanks to Jeets for joining us. I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty of him over the years as they go past. All the, all the very, very best, of course, to Jeets from all of us. Please do join us again. Thank you for your company this evening, uh, all the Bears members. Um, please do join us again at 6.30 next Monday when another Bears legend and just to depart, Tim Ambrose will be with us. So please do let us have your questions for Amby. Uh, finally, Jeets, many thanks and uh, good night to everybody. Thanks, Brian.